So now that really we are approaching the end of uh, the Linux processes course, we're going to take a look at a few examples or exercises that you might uh, have to implement during it. And it would be very helpful to know how to implement them because then you know how to take certain decisions. Now, the first exercise that I want to show you is as follows. First, I want to create two processes, right? Just a parent and a child. And I want from the child process, so one child process should generate random numbers and send them to the parent. That's all it's gonna do. It's gonna generate uh, however many random numbers it wants. So we're gonna set a range. For example, it's gonna generate something between five and 20 random numbers. And it's gonna send them to the parent. And the second part is, well, the parent is gonna receive and sum them all up. So parent is going to sum all the numbers and print the result. That's all we want. And I want you to take a moment and think about how you would actually implement this. Is it straightforward? Is it similar to what we did before with just passing numbers? What uh, would be certain issues with this? So the first step would be to certainly fork the main process. So I'm going to just start here with just int process ID equals fork. I'm going to check again if PID is negative one. If it is, then again, just return an error code. We've seen that before. And in here, we're going to say if PID is zero, so if we are in the child process, what I want to do is generate those random numbers. Okay, let's do that. We're going to start with an uh, SRAND of time, time of null. Well, that's very simple. I think we need to include time.h. So let's do just that, time.h, that's for the time function. Let's just gonna see the, our random numbers so that they are actually random every time. And well, simple enough, we can create here an array. Let's say int array of, and here let's say we are gonna generate at most 10 integers. Because if we generate more than that, it's gonna be very difficult for us to check on the spot. And yeah, we're just gonna say here array of 10, uh, integers and inside this array we're going to generate the numbers but of course we also need an n that gives us the number of elements number of integers we need to generate because we need to generate also not only the random numbers but we also need to generate that random amount of numbers in that uh, array and i'm going to initialize here n to be rand and i'm going to say percent 10 so there should be the interval 0 to 9 inclusive, so we can get anything between zero and nine inclusive, but I want it to be shifted to the right a little bit because I don't want to send zero numbers and it would be nice to send 10 numbers as we've specified here, so I'm gonna say plus one. Okay, so at most we're gonna get 10 numbers and the least that we can get is one because we're adding one to this rand. Result, and then simple enough, we just give here an I and we're just gonna use a for loop for i equals zero, i less than n, i plus plus, and of course, array of i equals, well, just rand. And I'm gonna actually limit rand to be between, let's say, again, zero and uh, 10. Let's see, zero and 10 inclusive this time. So you can get anything between zero and 10 inclusive, that's why I say percent or modulo 11. Now, how do we go about sending the data? Well, first we need a pipe, right? So I'm gonna just open a pipe before actually forking. So I'm gonna say here int, uh, let's say FD, FD of two. And I'm gonna say here if pipe of FD is negative one. So we call pipe, but you also check its result. And if it is negative one, that means that something bad happens. So I'm gonna again return an error code, preferably different. Here again, you can actually add a, an error message if you want to. Okay, now that the pipe is opened, we need to decide which uh, process is going to write and which process is going to, is going to read. So we know that the child process has to send the uh, array and the parent process just has to read that array. So in that case, we can close the read end of the child process and the write end of the parent process because we're never going to write 
with from the parent and we're never going to read from the child process so here we can say uh right in here i guess we should say close of fd of zero zero is fd of zero is the uh read file descriptor and here after we have generated the numbers of course we should just write them so i'm going to say here write where to fd of one so to the pipe that we have opened we have the buffer array so we can simply pass in that and we want to write we want to write integers but how many integers well n integers and i'm going to also enclose it in a if statement if it's less than zero then uh, we know that something bad happened i'm going to again return an error code nice and that's really all there is that we needed to do on the child process generate the numbers and send them to the parent now in the parent process so this was all just the child process child process and in here else this is the parent process in here what we want to do is well first close of fd of one we know that we don't need that and also i forgot to close it here that would be very nice right so even though we don't need the read end we should actually close the right end once we're done writing so i'm just going to do that and here we don't need the right end so i'm going to just close that i'm going to start by reading into an array so i'm going to define here another array of we know that it at most we're going to get 10 numbers so that's amazing and well what we need to do is just say read of well we want to read from fd of zero into our array and we want to read size of int times how many integers here's the question we can't say n because we, we have no n in here right n was generated in the child process so what do we do in this case do we just read 10 well that's not right again because if we do read 10 then what if we write here just 5 this read is just gonna get stuck and never finishes execution so here's the key part about that they wanted to teach you in this video when sending arrays you usually want to send the number of elements in that array first before sending the whole array uh, through the pipe right that way we actually have n in both processes and we know however many we need to read so here in the child process actually before writing the array we should send first the number of elements in that array I'm going to say here write of fd1 the whatever is in n so whatever is in n the address of n we have to pass in here and we want to just send a single int and again i'm just gonna wrap this up in a simple if statement say return four all right and now if we have this sent to the parent process we can actually read it we can also say read fd of zero into n which well we don't have right now defined so we should actually define it probably let's say here int n and uh, let's say int i as well why not and of course wrap them all up into an if statement and let's say here if that is less than zero then return five and if this is less than zero also return six okay and in here when we read the array of course we're gonna have to uh change this 10 to our n that we now have a value for it's not uninitialized because we have read it from the pipe so we have here n simple and straightforward and then we can just create the sum so here i guess i can define it here so sum equals zero and let's say four i equals zero i less than n i plus plus and array of i or sum plus equal array of i and then i can sort of print this on the screen uh, result is percent d backslash n and then i can see here sum and of course after we're done with the pipe with reading from the pipe we should also close it so i'm going to also close here fd of zero and one last thing would be to wait for the child process to finish just in case uh I don't know the close operation takes a bit longer or something like that uh, we should always wait for the child processes to do that because otherwise the the resources are not freed okay let's try launching this program let's see what it does if I launch this I should get on the terminal something at least 
of value and that is result is 46 but this doesn't really tell us anything because we didn't print any numbers that we have generated on the screen so we should actually do that before uh, looking at this result and knowing whether it or not it is right so what I'm gonna do here is once this is executed I'm gonna say print f send n equal to percent d backslash n I'm gonna give it n here so that just some helpful uh, print messages. So we sent n numbers and in here, I guess in the for loop that we are generating the numbers in, I should actually say uh, generated the percent, the, the value here. But what I'm gonna do is percent d space array of i and notice I'm not gonna add a new line character here because I'm gonna actually print out here saying generated and colon and no new line here either because these are this and this is going to be all on the same line and after the for loop i'm going to print out a new line just so that we have it nicely formatted then sent uh that and i guess we can also say printf sent array i'm going to actually print out the whole array here because we have done that up top and in here we can say printf received uh received percent or how is it n equals percent d i think it was yeah cent equals received n equals percent d and that should be n and the array we can say here receive the array why not receive the array like that and backslash n that would be important to add backslash n everywhere otherwise it's just gonna look very strange and now if we actually launch this program we should see some uh, results and we should actually check be able to check whether or not this worked so if i launch it we were gonna get what are we gonna get so we got n equals eight we generated all these numbers it sent the n it sent the array then it received the n received the array and then the result is 39. so the sum of all these numbers from up here is 39 and if we count here this is 8 this is 16 19 29 uh, 30 and 39 so indeed it did calculate the sum uh, what I wanted you to take from this video is the way we use to actually send arrays uh, through a pipe or through a FIFO for that matter uh, which is also named pipe is that you always have to send first the number of elements in that array okay so I made the code a little bit clearer just to give you a very simple overview what we wanted is to send a randomly generated array of randomly generated amount of numbers so here we have the n which could be anything from 1 to 10 inclusive and we have generated the array here again i said modulo 11 that's because i want also 10 included so you get anything from 0 to 10 here then i write that n this is the most important part when dealing with arrays and uh, pipes is that you have to send in the number of elements and really this applies to also files if you try to write on a file an array this is better than just reading until the end of line usually uh, since you you don't always want to read um, until the end of line you might want to have multiple informations on the same line so that's why i'm saying this also applies to files but right now we're just using it to write on pipes and this is the way to do it here we have the uh the n here sent and then we send the array notice here you can send the array straight out as just one big blob of memory because the array is just one big blob of memory it's one int after another put tightly together in the memory itself so you can send it all at once so that's fine and uh, then we close the don't forget to close your file descriptors here in the panel we close the right end we receive the n otherwise we don't know how many numbers we should actually read from the pipe then we read the n numbers from that pipe and of course we close the file descriptor we oops we create the sum and then we show it on the screen and don't forget again to wait uh, for this and also don't forget to close the file descriptors so here i have closed the right end and here i have closed the read end 
And really that's all there is to writing arrays into pipes. I hope this video has helped you. If you do have any questions regarding this or any other uh, topic, really, uh, do leave a comment down below or check us out on the Discord server. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.